Hey everyone, I'm Scott Branley. And I'm Alicia Coakley. Every member of the church has a story to share, one that can instill faith, invite growth, and inspire others. On today's episode, we're going to hear how a battle to overcome an addiction to video games taught one college student that God can give us the tools to conquer the natural man. Welcome to Latter-day Light. back to another episode of Latter-day Lights. We're so glad you're here with us today. We're really excited to introduce our special guest, Grant Johnson. Grant, how are you today? I am doing great. How are you? We're good. good. <laughs> really good. Yeah. So I don't know about you guys, but Texas, we're, we're getting some warm weather. And I'm actually happy about it because it means we get to go outside and play in the water and stuff like that because we've had a really long winter. But yeah, I'm enjoying warm weather. How about you? What's it like over there? You guys starting to warm up? Yeah, it's been really warm today, actually. I think it's the highest it's been. So it's, yeah, we're excited uh, nice. for that. <laughs> Very cool. And I bet you're excited. You're are you, now you're in college right now. Is that right, Grant? And so right. are you going to are you going to take off for the summer? So I'm graduating this May. So Oh. We'll be, yeah, You'll be we'll done. be moving, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Very cool. Well, Grant, why don't you, I mean, as, aside from graduating, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself? You know, what do you graduate, what program are you going into? Are you married? Are you single? Do you need a date? I know a girl. No. <laughs> oh, tell us yeah. about, about who you are. <laughs> So I'm I'm from North Carolina, but yeah, I'm going to school uh, at Southern Virginia University. And for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like like the BYU of the East Coast. Uh, yeah. It's not uh, affiliated with the church, but it holds the same standards. So most of the uh, students here are members of the church. Um, and yeah, I'll be I'll be graduating in psychology um in just a few weeks here and planning to move uh back to north carolina um and so yeah that's a little bit about me and i I am married Uh, i did meet my wife here uh, in the psychology class actually um so yeah so you you went to school to get a degree and a wife that works That's right. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I actually am familiar with SVU. I grew up in Florida and that was like my top pick when I was, you know, looking at colleges. I didn't end up going there, but, um, but it looked like a beautiful campus and it, you know, I heard really good things about it. So I'm a little bit jealous that you got to go and I didn't, (laughs) but proud of you for doing that. So is your wife graduating too? She is, yeah. Yeah, we're both graduating and yeah. Both uh looking to be kind of work in the human services kind of coaching field, help people um in that area. So yeah. Awesome. Oh, that'll be right. And we need it. This world definitely needs it. So kudos to you guys for going into something that's gonna, you know, be good for your life but also help other people with theirs. I think that's awesome. So, all right. Thanks. Well, Grant, uh, we are really interested in hearing a little bit more about your story. I particularly am interested in hearing about this because I've got a couple boys who are teens who love video games. My husband has been a, a huge gamer. <laughs> yeah. Forever. I, I think our kids probably, I, you know what? It's my daughter too. Who I'm not going to lie. Scott, it's your daughter oh, too, yeah, right? Grace plays games, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> so we have gaming children. I think it is such a huge, huge uh, thing that's happening, and it's not going away anytime soon. So I'm super interested in hearing like how you found balance and the ability to, you know, to be better through through this. So let's uh, go ahead and give you the floor, my friend, and let you tell us like where does your story begin. Yeah, so you're totally right. It's 
it's not going away and it's probably it's going to get worse and better like uh video games they're not they're not all bad um mm-hmm. but they can definitely be addictive and you know they're only going to get more um stimulating i mean we're only going to get mm-hmm. better technology in the future um things like vr and and just tech uh, companies creating just more enticing games and apps and and so i think yeah it's really important for you know us to learn about it and parents to to know these things um cuz you know being uh 24 um you know my parents and i don't think many people they they don't really know that the, the impact that uh technology can have on our mood our motivation our mm-hmm. focus and just everything in our lives and um and it's only now that we're beginning to understand more about these things and kind of the the positives and the negatives and and so uh, i mean you can understand a little bit why like these things are so uh, fun and why so many people engage in them like boys and girls mm-hmm. um but yeah so i i grew up um playing video games pretty much before i can even remember i was playing a really popular game uh at the time called world of warcraft i mean it's still really yeah. popular but <laughs> uh, that was kind of the game that I that I grew up playing, um, and so my my brother and and my dad we we played it together and um, and that was pretty much what I really cared about growing up um, was just playing games and I would rather do that than than go to church to be honest I I would stay up mm-hmm. late playing games um, I dreaded having to get up early in the morning for seminary um and it kind of consumed my life uh and you know it can it can be good in in moderation um Mm -hmm. and i think it had a lot of positive effects on my life i i met some of my my best friends through playing games i i learned a lot of different things i mean games they they have a competitive nature to them some of them um But it also kind of, uh, kind of sapped my motivation. I realize now that I I was not very motivated to get a job in high school um, or to date like things like this. Like I was, I kind of stayed to myself in my room, played games online with my friends, and um, that was actually one of the the main reasons I went to. Southern Virginia University is because they were starting an esports program, so I mm-hmm. I wanted to play uh, play video games there, um, <laughs> and yeah, so it was it was really fun, and uh, it wasn't until I got into college though that I started to wonder like kind of well. Uh, I oh, I didn't know what I was studying, so I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I you know at some point I'm going to have to not live with my family, and I'm going to have to get a job. And so I started to think more about these things, and I was getting more influenced by my roommates. I, luckily, I had a positive influence at this school, and so I started to to think about my future more, and um, I started paying attention more to my patriarchal blessing. Um, Mm -hmm. And I read about the things that um, would take place in my, in my future, you know, if I was able to um, kind of overcome some of these habits and, and focus more on, on the gospel. And that's kind of the the first thing that I realized uh, as like a key to overcoming addiction and habits is just having a a vision for the future um something that can motivate you and and so my vision was was to have a family um be Mm -hmm. someone who was disciplined enough to provide for them um and that's really what what made me decide to serve a mission um it at the time i 
I really didn't have much of a testimony of the gospel. It was it was really that I knew a mission would help me to discipline myself, or at least I, I hoped that it would. I knew that it had changed my older brother, and I knew what it had. Uh, I knew what other returned missionaries were like, and I wanted to be more like them. And so, yeah, having that clear vision really really helped me to get started. Um, and now that I've been kind of thinking more about this, I the story I really like to connect it with is just uh, Lehi's family and how what you know really motivated them was having that vision of the promised land um, mm-hmm. the Heavenly Father you know, promised to them and and also um, gave Lehi a, what I call like an anti-vision um, of Jerusalem being destroyed. And so that can be really motivating too. You know, I, I mm-hmm. thought about how my life could be um, could be worse um, if I kept down this path. Like if I kept just giving in to my desires to play games um, and just, you know, watch social media and, and shows all the time like what my life would look like and and so having like that vision and that anti-vision uh yeah really motivated me to to start um, exercising faith and and serve a mission and so in my uh online mtc i so i i started my mission about uh, right when covid19 uh Mm. started um so I I was doing MTC at home, training to be a right. missionary, and this was where I discovered kind of the second big thing that helped me to overcome my habits. Um, the first one being vision, and this both of these things like I just kind of stumbled upon, and it was, and this I feel like is the biggest thing for anybody trying to change their habits or overcome addictions, and it's just figuring out a healthy replacement for those things. Um, Mm -hmm. So when I started to study and prepare to be a missionary, I spent uh, less time with my friends online and I was starting to spend more time with my family um, because I knew I was going to be leaving them soon. Um, I started to study the scriptures. I started to learn more about how I could become just a good missionary and teach other people. And I realized later that these things were basically fulfilling my values uh, that I was getting from video games. Um, Like I was connecting to other people through video games online. I was, Mm -hmm. you know, progressing through, uh, you know, leveling up my character um, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you feel like you're contributing when you're playing a game, you know, you're working as a team or, you know, you're in this world or maybe you're you're helping people. And so now I was kind of translating this into the real world with spending time with people in person. And I was learning about different skills related to missionary work. Um, and so that uh, basically... What I what I learned later is that the we can we can fulfill our values with things like video games um, that give us a a lot of pleasure um, mm-hmm. but can mess with our brain, or we can fulfill our values with things that take a little bit more effort and they're not as instantly gratifying, but they don't they don't mess with our brain, so they're long lasting and so they um right consistent and and so that's uh i say that's the biggest thing um for parents uh and something i'm thinking about uh as my wife and i were actually having a son um in september um is um thinking about how to give our child healthy replacements for things like video games. Mm -hmm. And so 
as parents, I think you can think about why your children engage in those things. Like maybe they are uh, satisfying their like competitive drive. And in that case, like sports are a very common alternative. Um, mm-hmm. And I was recently reading uh, a, a book called uh, About Five Factors uh, Driving um, the Kind of the Lack of Motivation in Boys, it's called Boys Adrift. And he talked about how a parent, they uh, basically had their kid just go into football because they saw that they were spending so much time playing games and the the son he really didn't was not happy at first um which i guess like it's just something parents will have to endure like if it's already started um but later that kid he he really came to love football uh instead of playing i believe he played uh madden which is basically a football video game um and he came to just love the real thing and um moving his body and and so i think that's just a great example of like that replacement um Mm -hmm. i really like what you're sorry i yeah i really like what you're saying about how like there was something that that the video games were fulfilling in you like there was a need or a drive or something and i actually i just did this uh like four-day workshop thing or whatever (laughs) like a Tony Robbins thing. I love that. I love that guy. Anyway, so I did this like whole thing. And, and part of the workshop that we learned about was um, how we have six human needs and like everything we do, um, uh, it, it basically like is linked to one of those human needs, right? Like we don't do anything just for the heck of it. We just don't, we have some type of need that needs to be fulfilled. And so they talked about, um, the needs are certainty, significance, variety, connection, growth, and contribution. And so, um, you know, like some people do things because they like the certainty, like, like they know exactly what to expect from beginning to end. Right. And that's what they need. And maybe it's, uh, people who grew up in a home where, um, parents were always moving them around or they were, um, you know, maybe their parents weren't in a relation, like a committed relationship. And so there was people coming in and out or whatever else. So maybe those are the type of people who really, really just want something that's like stable and structured and, you know, something that they can depend on to be there all the time. You know, like a video game, you click it, you turn it on, it's on. Like, you know what to expect, you know, the characters, you know, the mission, you know, everything. So there's not like a big surprise, but some people on the flip side need variety, right? Some people maybe grew up in like a military family where everything is so structured and they're just like, like me, like I'm, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl, (laughs) you know, like I love spontaneity. I love not have, I have to have a plan. Otherwise, you know, things fall apart in my life, but I love having spontaneity. I love having uncertainty. I love just kind of winging things and seeing what's going to happen. Um, and then as far as significance goes, that's of course, like you being a significant part, like you mattering, like someone needs you. And I can see how with video games, it could be like, maybe your teammates need you to cover this part of the mission or, you know, what it is, something like that. Um, and then there's connection and connection is like that, what, what you're talking about, like the, the community that you build, right? Like talking to other gamers. I just, I actually was talking to my oldest son today about how he's got all these buddies and they're from all over the world and, and they play video games for so long and have done it for months and months and months that they've built a relationship. And so they have these deep, meaningful conversations while they're blowing people up on video games. I don't know. You know, so it's almost like a brotherhood, right? Mm -hmm. Like he feels Mm -hmm. like it's like a place where he can safely share. Um, And so he's getting that sense of connection. But you're right, at the expense of what? Connecting with people in real life, with your your people who you're sharing a home with, the people that you're sharing a ward with, the people you're sharing school with or whatever else, right? Um, And then the more you withdraw, the less people rely on you. So then you don't feel significant to the people around you. Right. And whether that's, um, what were the other two, um, Oh, growth and contribution, right? Like, like how do you grow? Okay. Obviously if you're leveling up in a video game, that's showing you that your growth, it's making you feel 
like you're growing, like you're being better, you're becoming stronger, you have more, more arsenal that you've built up, or you've achieved this new level or whatever else. And then a uh, contribution, right? So like, how are you contributing to the world? And even though it's a video game world, sometimes, y- you know, like my kids, especially like my daughter, when she plays Minecraft or whatever, she feels like because she's building all of these amazing things, she's literally contributing to the Minecraft world. So it's really like that was so keen for you to pick up on. I have to ask, you mentioned the like you had some good influences, these roommates and stuff, and you were able to make these changes, but obviously you had to figure stuff out. So what did that look like? Did, did your roommates say anything to you or were, you, were they kind of more like quiet examples that you just started observing, you know, and, and what, it, what was that process for you? Like, how did you start figuring little things out? Did you go looking for them or did they kind of fall into your lap? Or were they given to you? Like what, what were, what did that whole process look like? Yeah, I had one really instrumental roommate who kind of took me under his wing he was part of the esports program and just kind of reached out to me and and started hanging out with me and we actually uh moved in to the same dorm uh, my first semester um and he was just a really good influence on me and um so a couple of things uh, yeah, factors there. Like number one, he he was planning to go on a mission at the the end of that school year, and mm-hmm. so that that had was a big part of me thinking about serving. And also, um, I was assigned a ministering companion there who was a return missionary, and so I got to spend more time with him. And and he, you know, he took me to. Uh, to minister to the people we were assigned and I was just really impressed with him and his character and he was engaged and it just motivated me to to kind of just think about my future and I was like I you know I want to be like this guy um so kind of like so, both of them were like the next stages, right? Like one preparing to go on his mission and one just getting off his mission. It was kind of like your like your next steps in your good visionary future, not your anti-vision, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um so yeah, that was just my really studying my patriarchal blessing for the first time I think in my life and just reading that and being like, yeah, I, I really do want these things. You know, I want a family. Um, and then um, that just kind of started everything from there. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, what you were saying with, with values um, and um, those things from that can be satisfied from video games. I, I think there's just a few things wrong with video games, right? Like you were saying, number one is it can take away from doing things in the real world. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even though you're satisfying those things in the game, it's like it's not improving your life. Um, and then the second thing is just like a flood to your brain. It's just so much fun, so much pleasure and dopamine. Yeah. And our our brains just weren't uh, designed to handle that. And so it leads to you not enjoying other things as much uh, eventually. Mm-hmm. If you, you know, if you engage in those things too much, then you just enjoy those things. And uh, like I said earlier, like I wasn't motivated to do other things. Um, um, Did you so, find that like, and and you'll know more than I do, obviously, because you're going through school with all this and stuff. But did you find that the more you played, the less you enjoy, like the the less it like gave you those those hits of enjoyment, like you had to do something more and something more and something more, like you had to go bigger or have more games or. You know, like, did you find that? Because I, I hear that that's what happens with dopamine, with like any type of addiction, right? Like your first hit is going to be the biggest. And so then you want another one. But the second time, 
it's not quite as good. It's still good, but it's not quite as good as that first time. And you always kind of try to chase that first time, but there's no way to ever get that first one back by experiencing the thing that you already experienced. You have to go then to like the next experience. So it like, it's like that, uh, that scripture that talks about like being bound with flax and cord, right? Like, it's just like a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Is that kind of what you, you saw happening with your gaming? Yeah, I think so. Definitely, I noticed that as I was becoming more aware of it, um, and I started to think about like how this was affecting me, and I realized like, wow, I'm like, I'm actually controlled by this. Like, it's just so difficult for me to sit down and and study, do my homework, and I realized like I needed, I needed it. Like I was. I had to play for like a certain number of time each day mm-hmm. or I just wouldn't feel good. Um, and so it definitely does. Uh, that's very accurate how you describe it. Like um, over time, it, it becomes more about just feeling all right and dealing with negative emotions more than it does like having fun. Um, mm-hmm. Just like any, any drug. Um, or substance that's addictive. That includes, it's not just, I'm not, I don't want to put a big target on like video games. I I hate them (laughs) unless it's Tetris. I love Tetris. I will play that all day long or like Candy Crush. I'll play those things. Like, I don't know. (laughs) Anyway, but (laughs) it does include things like our TikTok videos, our Facebooks, our Instagrams, our Snapchats, like all of that social media stuff. So I'm not picking on I'm like I'm not picking on gamers at all because it's all the same thing whether you're drinking you're clubbing you're even even um working working can be an addiction that separates you from your family and that takes you away from life and experiences and the ability to to serve and to grow and things like that right so anything can be an addiction if it's if it's done to the point of excess where you no longer can control not doing it right so it does not have to be just video games it's the same idea. Like your brain, Heavenly Father designed us all the same way. So our brain works the same in regards to addiction, no matter what that addiction is, right? Mm. Sorry, Scott, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to say, <clears throat> when I was a teenager, I was addicted to video games. <laughs> and I remember we were talking about that feeling, you, you get that euphoria of playing, but also like a feeling of emptiness. Mm. Um, because you knew it wasn't real and you were wasting a lot of time and, and effort in this, in this world that, I I don't know, you you could just tell that it wasn't, it it wasn't the same as living in the real world and having real connections, but, Mm. but you're in, you're get in it so deep. You don't know how to pull yourself back out a lot of the time. Yeah. What do you think the first step is, Grant? Like, it, like say, for instance, you're aware that you have a problem and that you do want to overcome it. But, you know, what what do you what would you say, especially to like. To like young men, you know, the ones who are getting ready to go on missions or mission age or whatever else, like what would you say to them? How could they start? peeling off the yeah. that the layers of addiction. Yeah, I think kind of as we're discussing here, we're discussing <clears throat> the what life could look like. Mm-hmm. What life looks like without an addiction, what life looks like with an addiction and so I would explain try to explain to that young man my experience and how life is better when um you know, you act in accordance with your values in a healthy way. And really what that what that is, is it's the first principle of the gospel. Like it's faith, like it's believing mm-hmm. that that life is better when you um, when you do what Heavenly Father wants you to do. Um, and so, you know, those values like, you know, those values that you mentioned there. I'm sure those all are present somewhere in the scriptures. Like those are what Heavenly Father wants us to do and do them in a healthy way. And so I think it starts with believing that that life is uh, just 
so much better when we do those things. And mm -hmm. basically help, I would help them uh, or I would invite them to, to create a vision for their life um, of what that could look like. And I would, I would explain that, you know, it would be hard at first uh, because you kind of go through this period that anyone goes through if you have an addiction where it could take, you know, a few weeks to a month or more, you know, where it's really difficult. But after that, things get a lot better and you're not controlled by that anymore. And you can gain a lot of satisfaction from other activities. Um, so I would kind of prepare them for that experience. Okay. So vision first and anti-vision. What was your anti-vision? Like what, like what did you kind of imagine your life would be like if you didn't stop? Yeah, I, I think basically I imagined I would live with my parents, live with my parents um, and just kind of leech off of them. And I would basically not have a family and, and just kind of keep playing video games. And um, yeah, that was pretty much the, the extent of it, like basically not, not receiving those those blessings from my patriarchal blessing um so mm. so like not progressing in life right yeah yeah there is this old show called south park i didn't really watch it but my brother used to watch it all the time <laughs> and there it was like this bad cartoon show or something and i remember there was a um a picture, like there was a episode or something. It's become a meme since then. Maybe I'll see if I can find it and Clarissa can add it to the, to the episode here so you guys can see it. But it was a picture of this guy who was gaming and he was, um, he just had like Cheetos all over his shirt and like the headphones on. He's like slouching and he had like, I, I don't remember how it all looked, but anyway, he, he just, he, he looked like he didn't take care of himself. Like, you know, just kind of greasy and, uh, you know, not healthy at all. And, he, and he's sitting there and he's playing his video games. And that every time I saw my boys or my husband with the, with the gaming headphones on and the, I imagine like that was in my head all the time. Like that would be my anti-vision. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I've actually used it in my own, in my own life. Right. Like, Oh, Alicia, if you keep eating cotton candy and popcorn every single night, like what, <laughs> what am I going to look like? I'm going to look like that picture of the South Park character. <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> It's, I really like that, you know, I'm all about, I'm all about manifesting and like having a vision for the future, but I really like having an anti-vision too. I like the idea of being like, dude, like we have to have something that kind of scares us enough or repel, re, like repulses us enough that we can be like, yeah, no, this one's better. Right. Because nothing, nothing is good or bad on its own. It's only good or bad when compared to something else. Right. So like you can envision this beautiful future but you don't know if it's actually beautiful until you compare it to something else. So I really like that you had that, like you had like both like op opposition and all things. We talk about that a lot on the show, don't we, Scott? <laughs> yeah. I've so. never heard of that concept either of an anti-vision. That's interesting. Yeah. So you kind of folk, you visualize what you want and also what you don't want or what the consequences of going on the path that you're currently on. I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what was um, next uh, year? You said it was replacing, like replacing with a new good habit, or, right? Was that the, the second thing that you kind of did? Right. Yeah. Because, yeah, you, if you try to just quit video games or any addiction, um, it's, it's not really going to work unless you have something to replace it with. Because like, you know, like we've talked about video games, they're, they're fulfilling a lot of needs usually for people. So mm -hmm. you need to fulfill those in some other way. And so I I kind of stumbled upon those things, fortunately, as I was preparing for a mission that satisfied my needs with skill and progression and education, as well as spending time in person with my family. Um, mm. So each person can, can ask themselves, like, and can do some introspection, figure out, like, what are my values? and what really fills me up and um, helps me to feel content. And um, whereas, you know, pay, if you pay attention to how you feel after social media or video games, like scrolling, you know, you, you probably don't 
feel good afterwards, right? Um, yeah. You usually don't feel motivated. And so um, things that really fulfill your values make you feel good afterwards. So, yeah. Did you have like a support team around you? Like, I know you mentioned your roommate and stuff like that. Did you let him know what you were doing and what you were working on so that other people could hold you accountable? Or did you kind of like work on it on your own for a while or? Yeah. So I, I didn't really start um, quitting until I started preparing to be a missionary. And, and so it was, really that environment of being a missionary and that accountability that came from being around other missionaries that really helped me. I mean, it was, I mean, that's kind of like a, a really big advantage that I had is because I, like I just put myself into an environment, giving my brain time to reset. It's like, I gave myself no option. Like I couldn't be on social media. I couldn't play video games for two years. Um, I left my, you know, my gaming friends. I obviously couldn't interact with them, really. So, mm-hmm. um, I and so that's definitely uh, not everyone has the option to just go on a mission, but you can definitely right. create uh, an environment, uh, and you can set up some accountability with, you know, whoever you uh, have around you to let them know about your goals. And that's definitely what I do now, is uh, I continue to share my goals with my wife and we we talk mm-hmm. about our goals regularly and she keeps me accountable um, because, you know, it never, never really stops, right? Like we each have habits right. that we're constantly working on. Um, and so that's definitely really important. I was actually going to yeah talk about that next, like environment and accountability would be like just, yeah, the biggest hack for, for overcoming addictions and changing habits. Mm-hmm. So why don't you, well, I don't know if I want it, like go, go into that. So how did you, I mean, obviously you were on mission, so that's a big change in your environment, <laughs> right? And it, and you have rules that you need to follow and stuff like that. So that helps with your accountability, but like, I guess, tell us a little bit more about, you know, about that pathway. Yeah. Well, I think, Part of it is letting the people know uh, that you have an accountability with about your goals. And and so we would have times as, as missionaries set apart to share our goals with one another each week mm-hmm. and um, each transfer and every day. And that's a habit that I, I'm definitely really grateful that I, I started. Um, is just because it, it instills in you a, a self accountability too when you um, create goals each day and it, at the end of the day uh, it's also part of the missionary schedule to journal um, and so you know at the end of the day writing about like my efforts and if I was able to, to stick to my goals and and so that's uh, definitely really helpful for staying accountable. Um, and yeah, I think it's you know you can kind of see it in in the scriptures and and even with the uh, the living apostles and prophets. Like for example, I think about uh, President Holland and you know his son who's a seventy, and I'm like I don't really think it's a coincidence that his son is a 70 like he you know his dad instilled in him the the values and and instilled in him the principles of the gospel and and it's that you know environment that he created that helped him to progress and uh it's the same you know in the book of mormon with fathers and sons like um you know being prophets and, and carrying on the 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 plates and it's yeah just a testament to me how uh important like the people we surround ourselves is uh to help us change our behavior so. oh, nice. 
Yeah, I agree. I think the people around us definitely can impact us in in positive or negative ways. Um, I think part of that it, that healthy replacement is maybe changing the people that you interact with on a daily basis, right? Um, like you're saying, you you spent more time with your family and and were around different and a different type of influence than when you were playing video games. I mm-hmm. think that actually yeah. has a big impact. How long was it from the time that you like started to wean yourself off before you went on your mission? Like, you know, how many, I don't know, months or years or whatever was that? Um, it was, I'd say it was about three months before my mission. Um, Ooh, not long I was, yeah, when I, when I came home from, from school and, uh, that's when I started spend more time with my family as I was home and uh, started doing things with them more instead of playing games. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just the, the mission was the biggest thing. But, um, yeah. Did you, like, when you were on the mission, did you have, I don't know, I don't know if you'd call it withdrawals, but, you know, like, did you have, like, the, like, more hardship when you're, you know, like, the missing of it and you know, things like that? Or was it easier because you just knew you couldn't play so nobody else is playing and you're just too busy? Yeah, it was it was hard at times and I definitely missed it at times and wanted to play. And I, I realized uh, later that I, I kind of started to replace gaming with with eating unfortunately <laughs> uh, for a while and I started having poor poor eating habits um, mm. and I realized later like all these things are are connected and uh, affect the brain really similarly and and so yeah. that's something people have to be careful about like um, you know when you're if you're uh, changing a habit uh, not to replace it with another bad habit, um, yeah. <laughs> and so that that kind of happened with me in the case of food and uh, as a missionary and yeah, I, would, I would just I would I served in Mesa, Arizona. And so um, I there were a lot of members of the church there and we mm-hmm. would uh, get fed dinner every night and people <laughs> would joke about how I would eat so much because I'm kind of a, <laughs> a small guy. But. But yeah, uh, I think I kind of coped in that way. It was something I had to overcome uh, more after my mission as I kept learning about more and more principles um, for behavior change. Um, One of the big things that I learned was about mindfulness um, because uh, my mission, it helped me realize I wanted to study psychology and kind of the science behind these behavior change things and repentance. And uh, I took a, a class about uh, therapy from a professor here. And one of the big principles I learned was um, about mindfulness, and um, which is basically, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, it's, it's really about being present and being aware of what's, what's <clears throat> going on right now. Uh, being aware of your body and your senses and um, mm-hmm. and I think it's something that is really important especially today because you know in the times of, of the scriptures like or just even 50 20 100 years ago so much easier because there weren't so many different distractions um, and and so you had time to just kind of be with yourself and to just think. Um, whereas nowadays it's like, as soon as somebody has a free moment, like a lot of people just pull out their phones and, and scroll mm-hmm. on social media and we never really give ourselves time to just process negative emotions. And, and that's really right. what mindfulness does is it helps you process those emotions. And, and that was something that I definitely needed was, to just uh, kind of process the boredom, process the stress that uh, 
I would escape from by playing video games or eating or going on social media. Um, and so, yeah, mindfulness, it's, it's like uh, things you can schedule into your day. Um, for me, I, lo- I love to... Uh, I love to exercise. Uh, I personally don't um, listen to music or anything while I exercise, and it just gives me time to just think and kind of mm. uh, focus on on my body. And at night, I like to, to stretch, and of course, like scripture reading and pondering great ways to be mindful. Um, and something else I I, I learned from from this cl- same class was. Uh, basically how you can be mindful uh, when temptations come because uh, you know you can schedule these things in your day um, but it's also important to have a plan for uh, when you know you feel tempted to uh, you know do whatever instant gratification habit you have and so yeah for me I, when that happens I usually like to just get up and move uh usually focus on my breathing sometimes i'll mm-hmm. have like a phrase i'll say it might be like i like think celestial from recent uh in the past general conference like uh yeah there's but there's a lot of really good techniques that can help to um basically deal with those negative emotions instead of coping with self-destructive behaviors Right. Yeah, that's it's interesting that you you talked about um just kind of like like changing your body, like changing something, you know, like doing something, right? Like and I think that a lot of times um you're right, it's it's when we're not mindful, when we like kind of zone out that all of a sudden those and it doesn't even have to be an addiction, right? Like sometimes it can just it can just be maybe it is eating. Maybe it's like, you know, when you're watching a show, how many snacks you can end up eating when you're watching a show versus if you're like actually like looking at a plate and like talking to someone during dinner time or something like that. You know, like I feel like you you eat a lot more when you're zoning out or you would you maybe drink a lot more, smoke a lot more, maybe you um you waste a lot more time, <laughs> right? When we're just vegging out or watching videos, next thing you know, it's like four hours later and we're like, what the heck? What did we do with our time? So I, I like that you talked about just like getting up, moving, doing something different with your body so that you can pull yourself out of that like blah state. But it's also good. I noticed a lot with, and it's not a generational thing. It's just a, it's just a time that we live in now. I think Um, people don't know how to be bored. We're entertained all the time. Like commercials are entertaining. They never used to be. (laughs) Scott, he knows. (laughs) We used to have some boring, you know, boring commercials. That was the time when we had to hurry up and get up and and go get a snack. And you know what I mean? Like we didn't want to sit and watch commercials, but now commercials are more entertaining because they're, they're all like mini TikTok reels. Um, And we have a really hard time not, uh, not being able to be bored. Right. And I don't know. It it doesn't have to be boring. Like just quiet, calm, still, right? Like it's Mm -hmm. really, really hard for us. And we know from the scriptures it's in that stillness that we can hear the Holy Ghost more often, right? It's in the moments where we turn off all the extra noise and where we take a minute just to kind of like really check in with our Heavenly Father and check in with ourselves that we get inspiration and that we're able to hear the Spirit and that we're able to like really understand on a deeper level, like who we are, how we're designed, what we're supposed to be doing. And so I I do think it's it's so sneaky of Satan, (laughs) Right. Like he's so sneaky. He's like, you just want to have fun. You just want to be happy. You just don't want to be bored. We, you know, don't be bored. Don't be bored. But it's not, it's not really boredom. It's just quiet, calm. You know, it's, it's really searching for the, the lessons. I know even in sacrament, my kids have a hard time. Um, you know, if, if this see uh, like the speaker in sacrament isn't starting off with a joke or a funny story or something like that, my kids are like, like their eyes glaze over, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, but listen to what's being said. Cause it's not about you being entertained. It's about you learning. And there's 
yeah, you can do both and I'm all for it, you know, but also it's okay just to listen and just see what it is that Heavenly Father is trying to tell you through someone else's words without all the extra fanfare and the fluff and the fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you get back from your mission and then, um, how did that, did you have that temptation or that, uh, desire to go play games again or what what happened at that point yeah it was a lot better um a lot had changed in me i i felt like i i really accomplished a lot of what i set out to do with serving a mission um uh and so i yeah i felt a lot more disciplined i started to have more confidence in myself and started dating for the first time i had never gone on on a date before my mission <laughs> you never went um, on a date before oh that gives yeah, me hope I, for I my never did. <laughs> yeah, yeah me too uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> so that was uh, an adventure but um yeah i felt i was able basically before my mission i was uh i took 15 credits uh and i had no part-time job i was just spending my time playing games but after i came back I, because of uh what I, I was able to change and how my brain was able to change i was able to take more credits i was able to have a part-time job and just spend my time a lot more productively um mm. and so that was yeah that was really really awesome and uh i felt like i could enjoy um more things just life more and it's still but like you said uh to answer your question it, it wasn't like uh perfect and i still still had temptations to play play games when i knew i should uh you know be working on something else and more so when i came back uh probably social media was was more tempting and uh youtube and, and things like that um, and that's that's what a big motivation for me was to to learn about psychology and keep learning skills to live uh, it's live in this world and you know the phrase like live in the world and not of the world and mm-hmm. yeah I really think uh, I think mindfulness is one of the biggest uh, and it's just a beautiful lifelong skill that we can learn to do that uh, I really liked what what you were saying and i think it's that's why like i think why sh- like shower thoughts is a thing right like it's mm-hmm. when our brain finally has a break from being entertained and we have like some uh some insightful thoughts that are or i don't know if you've experienced like uh going like going to bed and then your mind just starts like racing and stressing out and mm-hmm. um thinking about the next day and uh but you know if we give ourselves time during the day to, to process those things then then we'll you know we kind of deal with those things proactively Ooh. that is huh that's like a light bulb moment for me. That was genius, Grant. I didn't even think about that because that's, yeah, that's always my time when I'm like, my brain doesn't shut off for at least an hour. I'm not even joking. It takes me at least an hour to fall asleep every time I go to bed. So, and the, that's the reason why is because my brain's just, I have to do all this and I should have done that. And why didn't I do that? And tomorrow I'm going to have to do this. And now I have to pry towards that. You know, it's like, oh, I mean, I probably have too much on my plate too. I probably should stop saying yes to everything. But <laughs> um, that's really interesting. I never thought about that. So we could go to sleep. We could just actually just go to sleep and not <laughs> not have to lay in bed for an hour thinking about everything if we just give ourselves time to think about it during the day, like really think on it. That's really interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try yeah. that. Oh. Huh. Yeah, so it's definitely you, hard. But go ahead. Yeah. Do you do you play any video games now, or is that one of those things you had to take out completely? Like, do you know how to control it so you can enjoy it a little bit of the time still with like your dad and your brother, or or, or are you just like you know it's just a slippery slope and I'm going to stay away from it? Yeah. For me, I, I feel like 
this is a personal thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I think genetics play a role in in this and how addictive personalities people have. And for me, I feel like total abstinence is a lot better when it comes to games and and food, uh, certain foods. And it's like so. Yeah, I don't I don't play the the old games that I used to play online anymore. Um, I only play games occasionally, like party games with friends or on a vacation, not like playing like Super Smash Brothers with, with other people, um, right. like in person. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't play any like games online with friends. Gotcha. Hmm. That's really neat. And, and I do agree. I think, I think you're right. I think that's, you know, that's why we have a lot of the, um, policies and stuff put into place in the church, right? Like I know some people are like, well, Jesus drank wine, right? So why can't we drink wine? Well, it's because everybody's different and it's probably easier just to have a blanket statement of just don't, just don't go do those things that could be a slippery slope, mm -hmm. right? Like I, you could totally get me on a video game and I, I'll mm -hmm. play it if I have to, but um, that's it. <laughs> Like I'm not gonna I'm not gonna miss it if I don't play it. I'm it's it will not affect me at all. But you know, my kids, yeah. Now you give me chocolate. Yeah. That's well, a whole and, another story. <laughs> yeah, and I think Grant, you said earlier, you know, the the technology is just getting better, mm -hmm. right? And the game companies want to get you addicted because that you know they can make more money that way, right? Right. Um, and I remember even like games were addicting when I was younger, but not to the level they not are like now. Mm -hmm. But I even like when my wife and I first got married, we basically swore off video games. Um, and we didn't have we didn't have a, a video game console until my oh. kids were. You know. My oldest kid was maybe 10, So mm -hmm. there was probably, you know. I don't know, 12, 10 to 12 years there where we didn't even play games just because we knew that if we did, our kids would probably get be neglected. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I can't even imagine like now the games are just so much, so more intense and, and they just pull you in. So Well, and even now, I mean, it's I, like I feel like – our kids kind of are the kids that will never not know technology, right? Like our kids mm -hmm. started being toddlers and having their own little tablets and having their own little – granted, whether they were educational games or not, it doesn't matter because they were still games, right? Like our kids had those things when they were – before they could even speak, they were on a device, right? right? And so and, – and we didn't know all of the negative impacts back then, which totally stinks. Like we used our kids as guinea pigs apparently. Sorry, children, but you know, now we're seeing the effects and we're feeling the stress in our families and stuff like that. And and I do think you're right. It's just gonna continue to progress. We're gonna have and we're gonna have new addictions, right? Like we're gonna have new things that pop up because of technology and because of the progress that's being made. And even if it's not technology, I think that we're learning so much more now too, right? Like we're getting so much more information that's coming forth from the earth. We, you know, like who knows? I'm still waiting to see what happens with our aliens. <laughs> I'm waiting to see what they bring us. I don't know. <laughs> so uh, I, th I love, I love what you said, just kind of like recapping on like start with a vision and an anti-vision make sure that you are replacing it with good things. Right. And, um, and then just making sure that like, like for you, you, you started learning about your body, your brain, you started learning about like what is actually happening to you, why you're feeling the way that you're feeling, being able to check in with your emotions, you know, like I, I these are such good things and I think we can apply them forever to our life. You know, I had a thought, um, I know there has to be opposition in all things, right? Like that's just a given, but, um, there's gotta be, I don't think heavenly father designs things just to be bad, right? I think he designs things that have the ability to be good or bad. 
right? Like take the internet, for example, internet, great things are being done on it. Horrible things are being done on it. Um, Same thing with our brains. So while we do have the ability to have all of this dopamine released and to get addicted to things that are not good for us, what do you, and I'm sorry, I'm putting any on spot. Maybe I'm putting Scott on the spot too. What do you guys think would be the good thing? Like why did Heavenly Father design our brains and our bodies in this, in this way where we are becoming addicts for different things? How how do you think he designed it to be worked for our good? Or do you? Yeah, I, I've thought about that too. I, I don't think it's a coincidence that, you know, when the most people are on the earth at, at one time in human history that we have this technology um, and this big problem of instant gratification and and uh, I think you mentioned earlier how, um, like the the devil's tricks, and 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 he talks about this in the Book of Mormon with carnal security, and and so yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence. I I think it is that opposition of like instant gratification versus uh, long term meaning and happiness, and and so. Although I definitely suffered a lot in, from video games and, and feel like, I partially felt like, oh, I, I was held back. Like I lost those years of my life. But, but now I realize like I have such a, a passion for the opposite now that I've experienced that. And, I know that that'll that'll make up for if it hasn't already for the the time that I did lose, you know, playing video games, and mm-hmm. I have an appreci- appreciation for the the freedom and, and the ability to enjoy other things, and and so I, yeah, I think it it definitely is something that we are meant to each overcome and um, brings greater meaning meaning to our lives when we do Mm -hmm. yeah i think self-mastery plays a big part of it i mean we have to make we're we're confronted with things all the time it's not just games right right we're confronted with a lot of different challenges and and things throughout our life and it's how we react to them but sometimes we have to go through them like you're saying grant Sometimes you have to experience the bad to appreciate the good. And I don't think those were wasted years. They were learning years. You were learning lessons so mm-hmm. that you can you can do better in the rest of you can take those lessons and apply them to the rest of your life. You know, as long as we learn yeah. from from the challenges and from those lessons and do better, then then it's then it's just part of becomes part of who we are and the, and the, the adventures we have while we're here. Right. (laughs) So. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I was, I was kind of thinking about it and I'm like, I wonder if it's like with all those dopamine hits and, and with that ability to become addicted to something like what could we, what, if anything, could we be addicted to that would always be a good thing to be addicted to? I think serving others for one, right? Loving others. I think it's, there's so many people on this world, in this world that need to be loved. And like, some of them are like the worst of the worst people. Like, how do we love those people? Right? So if we, if we became addicted to those things that, that the savior taught us to do, that could be great, you know, educating ourselves. That could be a really good addiction so long as you always remember that there is a lot more to learn, that you are not as smart as Heavenly Father, right? <laughs> that he still needs to teach you, you still need the Holy Ghost, and that you can always be humble, right? So I, I think that there's some really good things. We could be even addicted to like healthy eating and 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 maybe come up with like more creative ways to um to enjoy food that is really nourishing and really strengthening for our bodies, right? So maybe that leads someone down the path of like cooking and baking in, in new ways. And I don't know. So I, I I think maybe all of that's there, 
yes, definitely to learn because we're going to make mistakes and we're going to, you know, think we're doing something cool and good and whatever else. But, but also because there are some things that Heavenly Father wants us to just really have a passion for. And I think maybe that, right? Like there's like a difference, like there's an, like an addiction and a passion and there, the addiction is, is something that controls you and the passion is something that you control, right? It's something that you like get to go after and, and that you're, you're wanting to use for, for good. So Hmm. Anyway, well, a lot kind of, of his stuff. addiction, his addiction turned into a passion, right? It passion did. Yeah. Psychology. Yeah. Understand yep, exactly. people. And so you, so you can help them. So yeah. Good point, Alicia. I like well, that. Grant, uh, any final thoughts, my friend? Yeah. Just going off of, off of that, uh, it's definitely become my passion and I compile kind of all of these principles into a free resource that anybody can can use it's uh just an email course um you can find it on balancedopamine.com and it's just one email each day for seven days and it just goes over all of the principles that i've learned from psychology and from being a missionary for how to overcome any addiction and, and learn to train your brain to love healthy habits and um so yeah just in in conclusion i i i know that god he's given us all the tools that we need to achieve that that self mastery or at least progress progress towards it as much as possible in this life he's given us the the scriptures he's given us personal revelation um he's given us help uh, in any moment that we need it as we reach out in, in prayer and uh, turn our mind to him. So. Oh, I love that. We'll be sure to share that. You said it's, it's balanced dopamine.com. Yeah. Yep. So we'll, we'll be sure to put that link in the description for anybody who, who wants access to it. I think that I'm totally going to go on there <laughs> and see about that. I think that's awesome. I love that you're doing something so positive with, you know, with the struggle that you were able to overcome. I, I love that you were able to learn it at such, at such a young age. Like I know you probably sometimes still feel like, oh, I wasted all that time. But, you know, Scott will tell you with how old he is now. <laughs> You're young. You have so much time left. I mean, you've, you've lived like this much of your life. And, and so it's amazing that, that you were able to figure something out so young and make this change. Um, and, and to be able to be a force for good and to be a light to the world. I, I just think that it is so needed in this, in this day and age. And so thank you for, you know, for allowing Heavenly Father to use all of those tools and resources to level you up and to get you to like that next version of who you're meant to be and who Heavenly Father needs you to be to build the kingdom. So this has been so pleasurable. Thank you so much, Grant, for coming on and sharing your story today with us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, and thank you all of our listeners that have tuned in to hear Grant's story. We really appreciate you too. And hopefully you got some things out of it for, for you or for your kids or for someone you know that is, you know, struggling with gaming addictions or other types of uh, social media addictions and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it is inspiring to see someone so young um, talking about this and hopefully helping other people to to be mindful of where they are in life and where they want to go. So, um, yeah. 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 Well, guys, we want to uh, encourage you to be sure that you share Grant's story. Do your five-second missionary work. Hit that share button. Make sure you guys comment. Let us know, like, what are the things that that either you've overcome or that you'd like to overcome? Or do you have um, any questions for Grant? I mean, I, the kid is a kid, young, you the man here. <laughs> you, you are so <laughs> he has done the work. He has spent years so far learning these things. And, and, you know, as much information as he's given us on the show already, I'm sure that you have a lot more access to more information, if you guys want to leave a comment, ask Grant a question, you know, I, Grant, I'm just going to encourage you to 
keep an eye on those comments and make sure that, <laughs> that you answer any. Um, cause I think it would be a really, really good resource. And, uh, and we just, we would love to be able to share Grant's story and to be able to help other individuals to, you know, to get a little bit better and to have a little bit more control over themselves and their lives and the things that they're doing with their time. Um, and speaking of time, if anyone else would like to spend some time coming on and sharing their story, if you guys are listening right now, Scott and I would love to hear more about um, an experience that you've had or something that helped you to build your testimony in some way. So be sure to reach out to us. You can either comment, you can uh, email us at latterdaylights at gmail.com, or you can ho- head over to latterdaylights.com. There's a, fill, a form at the bottom of the page you guys can fill out. It was easy, right, Grant? Took two seconds just to reach out and offer to share your story. (laughs) Not too painful, right? Not too scary, but uh, we would, we would definitely love to be able to share more light. So, so hit us up, reach out. I don't know. Is that the, it's, it's snatch being on the show. Is that right? I don't know. (laughs) I don't know if that's the right terminology. Snatch? Is that a new term? I don't know. I've heard it. It floats around. I don't know what it means. (laughs) I think it means cool. I could be wrong. Someone comment and tell me what it means. <laughs> oh gosh. All right. Well, thanks again, Grant. And thanks everyone for tuning in. And we will talk to you next week with another story. Till then, take care. We'll see you then. Bye guys. <laughs>